You're probably already aware that Akira Toyama passed away on March 1st, 2024. When I started writing this video a few months ago, I was looking to update and expand upon an article I had written back in 2017, and certainly wasn't intending to coincide with the tragic passing of a beloved artist. I don't feel qualified to speak to the full extent of Toyama's influence the world over, and certainly not qualified enough to put together a proper retrospective. But I did want to complete this video because it speaks to a particular element of his work that I've always loved. Toriyama was unquestionably a legend of manga, and his work is utterly foundational to what we know as modern pop culture today. But I think alongside celebrating the highs, it's also important to discuss the breadth of his creative output. The ideas, designs, and artistry that he wielded in lesser known work, outside of the big titles he's most commonly associated with. With worldwide fame achieved creating manga like Dr. Slump and Dragon Ball, and his work on video games like Dragon Quest and Chrono Trigger, Akira Toriyama is best remembered for the characters he created and the stories he told. Something he's less known for are his mechanical designs, the hard surface machines, vehicles, and robots used in his work. Skillfully blending realistic details with his own unique style, Toriyama's talent for using real airplanes, cars, and bikes alongside original designs like hovercraft and air skis was unparalleled. Throughout his career, beginning with his first professional manga, Akira Toyama used real-world inspiration and machinery to give his fantastic worlds a hint of the mundane. Typically rendered in a rounded, almost cartoonish style, best exemplified by the Capsule Corporation vehicles of Dragon Ball, these designs had detail, weight, and style that belied their cartoonish nature. Sometimes Toyama's mechanical design work played a prominent role, sometimes it was just background dressing, but it's easy to see the thoughtfulness and creativity he poured into all of these designs. To be clear, this video is not an exhaustive list of every interesting vehicle design that Toyama created. With thousands of pages of manga and artwork to his name, such a feat would be utterly impossible. Instead, I'll be looking at some of the common threads in his design work, tracing the development of his style from the late 1970s onwards. Despite nearly all of his work having some mechanical design elements, rarely does this particular talent of his get the attention it deserves. After a couple of years spent writing short stories for Weekly Shonen Jump that failed to gain the needed momentum for a regular series, Akira Toriyama found success in 1980 with Dr. Slump. It was a comedy series about the robot Arale and her inventor Senbei Noramaki and the odd people they lived with in Penguin Village. It also had a whole lot of poop jokes. The manga ran for four years, was collected into 18 volumes, and was adapted twice as an animated TV series first in 1981, and then again in 1997. According to Toriyama himself, his original intention was to focus on the character of Senbei, hence the name Dr. Slump, until his editor persuaded him to add a robot to the story. Originally, he wanted it to be a big robot, but it didn't really fit that well into comic book panels, so he went with a smaller design. Later, he tweaked this plan again and opted for Robot Girl, thinking that his editor would find her cute. While Dr. Slump was a big hit, it absolutely paled in comparison to his next series, Dragon Ball. Published between 1984 and 1995 in Weekly Shonen Jump, Dragon Ball was collected into 42 volumes and became popular worldwide, with multiple TV shows and films to its name. Dragon Ball drew inspiration from everything from Chinese novels to martial arts films, but thematically it changed quite a bit throughout its decade-long run. One consistent element was the aforementioned Capsule Corporation a company that sold small devices called Hoi Poi capsules that could be activated to release objects like vehicles or even buildings. The capsules actually first appeared in an earlier Toriyama comic, we'll get to that in a bit, but they became synonymous with Dragon Ball thanks to the capsules used by the character Bulma, daughter of the Capsule Corporation's founder, Dr. Brief. Outside of the story itself, Dragon Ball books like the volumes of Dr. Slump before allowed Toriyama the chance to illustrate a variety of real-world and original vehicles on chapter pages and covers. In both cases, 
Toriyama mixed original mechanical designs with real hardware, both rendered in his own special way that somehow made combining the two make perfect sense. The real-world vehicles that Toriyama did use in these illustrations suggests he was into some properly obscure stuff. Just to name a few, an obscure British sports car called the Reliant Scimitar SS1, the Triumph TR4 convertible, and a style of Mercedes-based pickups that were being produced by custom shops in the 80s and 90s but never officially rolled out of a Mercedes factory. That kind of obscure vehicular knowledge isn't unusual for artists, but it stands as a contrast to the wide-ranging appeal of his work. A gearhead that created manga for everybody. Akira Toyama's debut work in Weekly Shonen Jump was Wonder Island, published in 1978. In it, a Japanese kamikaze pilot named Furusu, marooned for years on an island called Wonder Island, attempts to return to Japan by enlisting the help of the island's strange inhabitants. These characters include a guy who looks like Tarzan with a pompadour named P-Man, a talking gorilla, and a witch that flies around on a vacuum cleaner. It's a silly and irreverent story, and at times it is completely nonsensical, but it did display at least a little bit of the real-world mechanical interests that fueled Toriyama's imagination for years to come. In a flashback roughly halfway through the comic, Furusu describes flying his KI-84 on a suicide mission before being foiled when the plane's propeller falls off. The KI-84 was a real Japanese fighter plane flown by the Imperial Army Air Service during World War II, who referred to it as the Army Type 4 fighter. While not as famous as the A6M-0 that Japan used earlier in the war, the KI-84 was a maneuverable fighter that was able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the Allies' best fighter planes. Earlier in the comic, Furusu is attacked by P-Man using an anti-aircraft gun as a slingshot to shoot rocks. While not explicitly named, this gun seems to be a dead ringer for the Flak 38, a light anti-aircraft gun used by Germany throughout World War II, though how it ended up on Wonder Island is anybody's guess. As Toriyama's career progressed, he would at times blend real-world machines with his own style. One such example was a short comic called Mr. Ho, published in Shonen Jump in 1986. In that story, Mr. Ho is a former soldier who helps rescue a girl from a gang. His vehicle of choice is a hover car based on the Porsche 356 Speedster, a sports car introduced by Porsche in 1948. Far from being the most famous car that Porsche ever made, it does have the distinction of being the first car sold by the fledgling, then recently independent company. Celebrities like Steve McQueen and James Dean both own 356s. Mr. Ho also features another classic European sports car in hover car form, the Dino 206, or 246. They both look pretty much the same. The Dino was a V6 powered sports car manufactured by Ferrari and named for the son of Enzo Ferrari, who was the founder of Ferrari. Some diehard car enthusiasts refused to acknowledge Dinos as being proper Ferraris, but honestly it's a silly thing to get hung up on. What's striking about Toriyama's use of the Porsche 356 and Dino 206 is that while both came from well-known car manufacturers, those particular models are obscure choices to say the least. When Toriyama did use real-world machinery in his work, they were often deep cuts, just like this. But what about Toriyama's original designs, typified by that rounded capsule corporation style? Well, a good place to start would be the story where capsules first appeared, and no, it wasn't Dragon Ball. It was The Adventures of Tong Pu, published in Weekly Shonen Jump in 1983. Along with another one-shot comic called Dragon Boy, Tong Pu served as much of the blueprint for Dragon Ball. Not only did Tong Pu feature obvious analogs for both Goku and Bulma, but it also included interplanetary aliens and the aforementioned capsules. The predecessor of Bulma was named Plamo, as in the portmanteau of plastic and model, which was used to describe model kits when character models were all the rage in Japan in the early 1980s, thanks to Mobile Suit Gundam. Most notably, it was also used in the title of Plamo Kyoshiro, a popular Gundam spin-off manga that ran in Comic Bomb Bomb from 1982 to 1986. Gunpla, a similar portmanteau of Gundam and model, is another one you might be more familiar with. Toriyama was an avid model kit builder, but it seems like the popularity of Plamo Kyoshiro, or maybe just wanting a more original name for his character, motivated him to use Bulma when he eventually got around to making Dragon Ball. 
In much the same way, the cyborg Tong Pu became the monkey boy Goku, but as we'll touch on later, he used that name again, for a model kit of all things. Much of Toriyama's mechanical design style seems locked in by the time he was working on Tong Pu. It was filled with the sort of hovercraft and aircraft that would be seen in his work for years to come. He was no one-trick pony, however, as illustrated by another project that he worked on in 1983. That project was Crusher Joe, a big-budget sci-fi film from Studio Nui and Upon Sunrise. Studio Nui was a collection of artists and writers who are probably best known today for creating the 1982 TV series Macross, but who also created Dirty Pair and the 1983 TV series Orgus. They also lent their design skills to numerous projects, including the influential Japanese release of the Starship Troopers novel and the setting for Mobile Suit Gundam. Nippon Sunrise was the studio behind Gundam and other hit shows of the era, so this collaboration was a pretty big deal. In the director's chair was Yoshikazu Yasuhiko, character designer and animation director for Gundam, who also handled Crusher Joe's character designs. Mechanical designs were the work of Shoji Kawamori, who was probably then fresh off working on the Macross TV series. Despite the powerhouse of talent in these two, producers did something unusual and tapped almost a dozen up-and-coming and established manga artists to design single elements or characters for the film. Hideo Ozuma, pioneer of the whole icon movement and author of the award-winning manga Disappearance Diary, designed a lizard thing named Group Ouch. Rumiko Takahashi, the feature creator of Ranma Half and Inuyasha, but who was then writing Odisei Yatsura, designed a character named Chug. The creator of Akira and Domo, Katsuhiro Otomo, designed a spider mecha named Arachne. And, as you can probably guess, Akira Toyama was tapped to design something for the film as well. What he designed was a space station named Max 310. While only briefly seen during the film's credit sequence, what made Toyama's design fascinating is that it ignored most of his personal style and instead leaned really heavily into a Studio Inoue style mechanical design, with lots of spindly antennas and surface details. So, while the mechanical designs in his own work at that time felt consistent and complementary, it's safe to say that he could tackle other styles as well. Without a doubt, Toriyama's best known design gig was for the long-running, wildly successful Dragon Quest games by Enix. He first started working on them when the very first one was released for the Nintendo Famicom back in 1986. While early Dragon Quest games made their way to the United States under the name Dragon Warrior, they never had the same impact in the United States or elsewhere overseas as they did in their home country where a new release meant huge lines in front of game shops. It's wild to think that at the same time Dragon Ball was taking off, Toriyama was also doing character designs and art for what was, at that time, arguably the most popular video game series in Japan. With its fantasy focus, Toriyama's Dragon Quest work isn't particularly relevant to this video, but another console role-playing game he worked on definitely is. Released in 1995 for the Super Famicom, Chrono Trigger featured character designs and artwork by Toriyama and he even managed to squeeze in some very interesting mechanical design work. Given the huge popularity of Dragon Quest, Toriyama working on another role-playing game was a big deal. Squaresoft and Enix would later merge in 2003, but when Chrono Trigger was in development, they were direct competitors. So first off, there's Robo, a robot character from the year 2300 AD. Despite being a product of the far future, Robo displayed some properly anachronistic design language, and among other things, featured a round magazine on his gun arm, like that of the Lewis gun. The Lewis gun was a machine gun used by the British Empire in the 20th century, and also by stormtroopers on Tatooine in a galaxy far, far away. Though, in that case, they took the magazine off to make it look a little bit different. Chrono Trigger also had the Epoch, a flying time travel machine. True to Toriyama's obscure interests, the shape of this vehicle was likely based on the flying wing aircraft concept, or more specifically, the Horton Ho 229. From the forward bubble cockpit to the tapered tail, 
The epoch shape seems directly inspired by this revolutionary yet never built German fighter bomber from World War II. Curiously, the brown wings and long rectangular segments on the wings of the epoch, which almost look like wood slats, may have drawn inspiration from the Horton Ho 4, an engineless glider built by the Horton brothers to test the flying wing concept. The epoch was also covered in air ducts, just like you'd find on the engine covers of cars with air cooled engines. You know, like the Porsche 356 we mentioned earlier. Changing gears for a moment, if you were an astute Formula One fan around 1990, then you may have noticed a small sponsorship logo on the nose of McLaren race cars, the word jump, written in katakana, which you can probably guess was for Shonen Jump. At that time, McLaren was experiencing ongoing success thanks to their dueling drivers Ayrton Senna and Alan Prost, who brought home manufacturer and driver's championships for four consecutive years. McLarens of that era were powered by Honda engines, and the legendary Ayrton Senna was well known in Japan. Shonen Jump's readership must have been right for this sort of cross-promotion, and Toyama himself was a big racing fan. He traveled to Grand Prix in Europe multiple times, and at some point even met Senna in 1990. Of course, Toyama produced some original artwork to celebrate the sponsorship, and Shonen Jump even ran commercials promoting it. Toriyama also designed a real car, partnering with CQ Motors in the early 2000s to design the Q-Volt. CQ Motors was a subsidiary of Japanese toy manufacturer Takara, and over its lifetime produced around 500 single-seat electric cars of various designs. Takara manufactures the Koro-Q line of toy cars, which, as you can guess, served as the inspiration behind CQ Motors' name. The company's cars were extremely toyetic, and often looked more like cartoon vehicles than real cars. The Caterham 7-inspired Q7 and Rotun Kuno models both looked like they would have been at home in a Toyama manga, and so it's not too surprising that Toyama was brought on to design a car himself. The Q-Volt was a single-seat electric car that drew inspiration from American hot rods in the 1950s, and marketing material for it featured artwork by Toriyama. Sold in 2005, only nine Q-Volts were produced, one of which, in Baby Blue, reportedly found a home in Toriyama's garage. Produced nearly 20 years ago, these were no modern electric car. The Q-Volt had a top speed of just 30 kilometers an hour, roughly 18 miles an hour, and a maximum range of just 80 kilometers, or 48 miles. These were fun oddities, meant for collectors and car enthusiasts rather than serious transportation, though with a price tag of 1,990,000 yen, or around 19,000 US dollars at the time, they weren't listed at supercar prices either. If you wish you could get your hands on one now, well, good luck. You'd probably have a better chance of tracking down one of the Koro-Q versions. When I first wrote about Akira Toyama's mechanical design work for Zimmerit back in 2017, things were pretty different. Most of his early short comics were completely unavailable in English, despite his international popularity, and despite the fact that they were released in other languages. Thankfully, things have changed, and you can now purchase a nearly complete collection of his early work under the title Manga Theater, available in English, published by Viz Media. Clocking in at over 600 pages, this massive book collects three separate Japanese volumes into one, and is perhaps one of the best deals you'll find in printed manga today. Wonder Island, Tong Poo, and Mr. Ho are all included in this book alongside many other comics. One of his shorter works that's been available in English for decades, however, is Sandland. A single volume adventure story that's experiencing a bit of a revival right now thanks to a new TV series and a video game, Sandland is a story about an old war vet and the demon Beezlebub who team up to search for the source of water in a post-apocalyptic desert. That makes it the closest thing you'll find to Toriyama's take on Mad Max Fury Road, 
assuming you ignore the fact that it was published 15 years prior. Much of the story in Sandland takes place as the heroes travel in a tank stolen from the army of an evil king. The tank is an original design, but it's grounded in reality, or at least as much as a Toriyama design tank could be. It features a turret that looks a bit like a cross between a Samoa S35 and the never-built AMX-40, which are both World War II era French tanks, and the treads of an A-15 Crusader, which was a British tank of similar vintage. The comic's other vehicles show obvious mid-century influences as well, with trucks that look like British gun tractors and an off-road vehicle reminiscent of the Kubel wagon. Sandland was an unusual comic for Toyama because the vehicles are front and center, but a somber author's note at the beginning of the trade paperback suggests that there might be a reason why he didn't create more stories like this. In it, he wrote, this was supposed to be a short, simple manga about an old man and a tank, which I made for my own personal enjoyment. But the tank was harder to draw than I expected, and I stubbornly insisted on drawing it all myself, so I came to regret ever getting involved with it. But the story was already plotted out to the end, so I couldn't change anything, and I went through hell drawing the whole thing. It's telling that a man who spent decades creating uncountable pages of high-quality artwork would complain about the toll of drawing a story with such a focus on vehicles. But it definitely explains why vehicles were, more often than not, just background dressing in his work. I mentioned earlier that Akira Toriyama was a big fan of model kits, but it's worth diving into a bit more because a lot of it goes hand in hand with his vehicle design work. In 1985, he teamed up with a small model kit manufacturer named Mugen to design a figure of a Wehrmacht soldier from World War II named Lisa. In 1986, he submitted two models to Tomiya's figure modeling contest an annual contest that challenges modelers to create original figures using Tamiya's 135th scale model kits. His first submission was called Hayo Silver, and it was a dynamic figure of a U.S. serviceman popping a wheelie on a Harley-Davidson WLA, which was a World War II era motorcycle. His other submission that year was titled Blue Planet, and it featured a Bulma lookalike next to an air ski and some decidedly Toyama-esque animals. According to Tamiya Japan's Instagram account, both of these submissions won several awards. Later, Toyama worked with Mugen again to produce a resin kit of a generic hover car, formerly named the Scout Mobile Tongpu Type 8. See, there's that name again. Even though it was intentionally generic, it was very, very close in design to some of the hover cars seen in Dragon Ball. At 135th scale, it was designed to be customized by the modeler so much so that the instructions even suggest you do anything you want to with it. And of course, that scale meant that it was compatible with heaps of military models from companies like Tamiya, perfect for kit bashing. Mugen eventually became Fine Molds, a model kit manufacturer that still exists, having produced models of everything from World War II fighter planes to Star Wars X-Wings. The company's mascot, which is a wolf holding a sword, was drawn by none other than Toyama himself. Judging by a listing on the Hobby Link Japan website, the Tongpu resin kit seems to have last been reissued sometime in the late 1990s, so it's long out of production and can be hard to find. But what if you've got the itch to build a Toyama vehicle yourself? A good place to start is Bandai's Mecha Collection. It was a set of seven model kits based on iconic vehicles from Dragon Ball and released back in 2017. These were small models, which means there isn't much detail and the characters do require a bit of paint but they're easy to build and aren't that hard to find. That said, beware because these originally sold for just about $5 when they were first released. So temper your expectations accordingly and watch out for overpriced resellers. If you're not into building vehicles yourself, there are some other options. For example, Mega House released a line of display-worthy figures called the Real McCoy series. These featured vehicles and characters from Dragon Ball which were based directly on Toriyama's illustrations. They were released about a decade ago though, and can command some pretty high prices on the second-hand market. Cheaper, newer options include a recent SH Figure Arts Capsule Corporation motorcycle to go alongside their Dragon Ball figures, or some of the recent merchandise for the Sandland series. 
These include model kits by both Bandai and Mega House and a Chogokin toy based on the series tank. And who knows, if all this Sandland merchandise is a success, maybe we'll see some more models and toys based on Toriyama's earlier mechanical designs. It seems unlikely that Toriyama will ever be known for his mechanical designs in the way that, say, he's known for spiky-haired heroes or multicolored slimes. But Toriyama's work touched many different types of people in many ways, an accomplishment that speaks not only to his talent, but to the breadth and depth of his work. The release of Manga Theater opened the possibility for fans to explore his lesser known work in English, and I think whether you're a hardened fan or just a person that enjoyed Dragon Ball or Sandman, you'll find something worth reading in there. His work was hugely influential, his vehicle designs were incredible, and I'd recommend you spend some time exploring the worlds he created. The legacy he leaves behind is enormous, and it's easy to get caught up in the grand scale of his work and his accomplishments. But as we celebrate the enormity of what he left behind and what he gave to us, it's important that we look at the small things too. The motorbikes, hover cars, and airplanes peppered throughout his work remind us that even though he created larger-than-life characters for a global audience, he was still the guy who liked building models and appreciated interesting vehicles. Sometimes it's those little details that tell us more than we expected. Thank you for watching this Simmerit video on YouTube. I know you've heard it a million times before, but please like, subscribe, and share if you enjoy this kind of thing. Leave a comment if you think there's something we should cover in the future, and don't forget to visit Zimmer.moe for more articles just like this. Heck, you'll find a link to the article this video is based on in the description below. See you next time.